We're recording. Great. Uh, good morning. This is the Elementary School Building uh, Subcommittee. It's Wednesday, the 10th of May, 2023. Um, and this is a new subcommittee, so we don't have a formal chair uh, yet. Um, uh, but I am Jonathan Salvan, one of the uh, uh, members of the of our larger committee. Um, and I am calling it to order this morning. Um, the first uh, item on the agenda is to, to organize leadership. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start off saying I don't mind chairing today's meeting. I, I would prefer not to be the permanent chair just because I, I believe I'm still the chair of the, uh, the um, net zero committee. Um, but, but I am okay volunteering for, for today's purposes to, to be the chair. Does anyone want to be the temporary chair or the permanent chair? I nominate Jonathan as <laughs> temporary chair. Okay. Is there a um, second? Need a second? Yeah, we guess we need to need a second. I'll, I'll second, second I'll myself. Second. Oh, Mike will be second. Great. Um, we should take a vote. Um, uh, Mike? Aye. Sean? Aye. And uh, Jonathan is also a yes. Um, Jonathan, sorry, uh, Rupert just joined us, and oh, now we have four. Great. Good morning, Rupert. Can you confirm that uh, you can hear us and we can hear you? Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, I don't know quite when you, you joined us, but we were uh, just doing a little bit of organizational work um, and uh, electing at least a, a temporary chair for today's meeting. Um, just did you come in? while we were doing that? And did you have a desire to, <laughs> to be a, a chair to this committee? I don't want to leave anyone out. Uh, I have no desire to be the chair of the committee. I only heard the second, so I don't know who the nominee is. It's it's me. <laughs> ah, uh, uh, Rupert I. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, I personally find it hard to take notes and chair. Can I get at least a volunteer for today's meeting to, to record? Jonathan, uh, I just wanted to say, sorry, I know we just yeah, voted, go but um, I, considering that you're already chairing another subcommittee, if it'd be helpful for the group, I'm happy to become the chair, you know, either today or after today or something like that, because you shouldn't be doing both. Thank you. <laughs> well, why, since we already voted, let's, let's just proceed okay. uh, as we are today. I was kind of prepared to do it today. Um, I just know that the next month, uh, six weeks is, is going to be kind of intense. So, okay. And I'll take, um, I can do minutes today. Thank you, Sean. Jonathan, sorry, me again. Um, yep. There's another Donna Danisco on the call. So I'm assuming that's Biniam, but um, from I our office. Philip. Philip. Okay. Um, my team, you should be able to change your name and that might be a little more helpful. And, and Philip, if you could show your face, that would be great too. And now we've got Margaret joining yeah. us. So we're all a little, uh, run a little behind. That's okay. <laughs> I'd say it's a Monday, it's, but it's not a Monday. <laughs> um, is this everyone you expect from your team, Donna, or, or is, are there other people that we should wait for before? Uh, we probably good. Benium is not with us this morning, correct, Tim? That is correct. Okay, okay. that should do it. Uh, Alex, uh, maybe Philip can show you how to change your name. Um, and more, most importantly, we have John Sousa from Crabtree McGrath, who's our kitchen uh, food service consultant. And John, you have a hard stop at ten, correct? Yes, I have to. Okay. Uh, Leave okay. the meeting. <clears throat> well, uh, I think we've done all the organizational uh, items we need, uh, at least for today. Um, and so, Donna, I'm going to more formally turn it over to you to uh, to walk us through uh, what you need to walk us through today. I think yeah, you're starting thank with. You. Uh, do you want to start with the value engineering schematic design piece, or do you want to go straight to the the cafeteria and kitchen, given the time constraints. Tim, I, I think what we want to do, um, let me just give a quick overview and sure. thank you. I know we'll be having people, sorry, Mike, go ahead. 
Just uh, my only request, I didn't mean to interrupt, is that uh, because we have Mike Gallo O'Connell, our, our school nutrition director here, if folks could prioritize talking about cafeteria and kitchens first, if there's other topics to get to, great. Um, just out of respect for his time, um, I'd appreciate it. Agreed. And and same with John. But um, so so hopefully I will be seeing you all very frequently. Just want to give you kind of an overview. This is going to be somewhat of an iterative process. Um, our, our goal is we have about four months to complete um, design development. So this building, the subcommittee really is going to be important. We have a separate one for site, separate one for sustainability, but this is really to make sure that um, all the aspects of the building uh, are, are for the most part identify throughout this process. We do have a little catch up to do, which is value engineering. Uh, to your point, Jonathan, we accepted a lot of um, minor changes to reduce the overall cost of the project, but um, we also have some items that we do need to wrap up um, at this phase, and we've identified those over the next several meetings. Uh, and, and we'll kind of recap at the beginning of every meeting where we left off with the last one, just so there's no confusion as well, and making sure that we're all in agreement. And then ultimately we'll be reporting to the building committee as a whole on a monthly basis, um, the work of this group. So I, I know it's a lot. Um, we really appreciate your involvement. It's so important that you remain um, involved and this is your school. So with that, Tim, I um, introduced John Sousa with Crabtree McGrath. Um, hi, Mike. Nice to see you again. Um, Mike and John have met once before. We did a little bit of um, original conversations, but Tim, I'll just turn it over to you. I'm assuming you've got a, something to share. I have a plan that I'm going to bring up on the screen of uh, the cafeteria, uh, the building in general. I also have site plans for reference, but. I will need Jonathan or Sean to allow me to share oh. my screen now. You should be all set now. So jumping right in, we're gonna talk about the cafeteria as it relates to the elements of the kitchen, how it flows and how it relates to the site immediately outside. Uh, the reason we wanna talk about this at the very beginning of this process is because um, there are some changes and shifting happening outside with the site. And we just wanna make sure that um, this large space that is used by a lot of constituencies in the school public uh, connects to all of these elements appropriately and works the way that uh, has to happen, that the uh, egress to recess coming in and out, the use of the music spaces, and most importantly, the servery line all um, is set up to function flow as uh, we talked about initially and we'll talk about as we get deeper into the design. Uh, so I'm just going to zoom right in on cafeteria. We have it set up so that there are two serving lines going to point of sale transactions in the center, entering from both sides, a bottle filler at one side, tray return at the other, chair storage, um, the kitchen as it was initially discussed with John and Mike. Um, entrance from the main lobby to the cafeteria and seating for three servings. Uh, we want to make sure that we have all the major elements in the right place. We have them appropriately sized. We want to make sure that we haven't missed anything. Uh, we don't have an item or area specifically identified for trash, composting. I know we've talked about that a couple of times and so it's problematic. So we First, want to take a look at the overall layout and make sure that um, it's what we expected and that we're moving in the right direction. And that we're, I realize that no one has been looking about it and thinking about it for all the time that has left, but if they have things that we might want to shift or change. And so maybe John, Susan, I'll, uh, if you want to 
bring up any questions that you might have or uh, facilitate the conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, yes. Yeah, so the plan that you see there, um, we we have indicated some equipment on the plan based on you know those early discussions. Obviously, we'll continue to refine the design um, and improve it as as we go along in a collaborative way. Um, if you want to zoom in, I can I can I, I can speak to various components of, of the kitchen. Uh, for the most part, it's it's all the basic components that you would see in any school kitchen. We have the ability to store, right? So we'll have we'll have walk-in cooler and freezer, uh, and dry goods storage rooms, so that we can um, you know have a, a store of goods that we then process, we prepare it, uh, we cook it, we then serve it. Um, Cooking will take place. Uh, this is an all electric kitchen. Uh, we understand that, but uh, cooking will happen in convection ovens, as we had discussed. Steaming will happen in a steamer. Uh, we have a kettle and a brazing pan at this point uh, to be able to, to do you know, large batch cooking. For example, you would do uh, in the kettle, you could do large batches of pasta. Uh, in the skillet, you could do large batches of, uh, say, soups and and meat sauces and that type of thing. So you have the ability to to, to prepare fresh, nutritious food here. Uh, the the components are there. And again, this equipment will shift around. It will, you know, its type will will change with respect to what its function is. But one thing that will not change, uh, from my understanding, especially with net zero goals, is that it will remain uh, electric equipment. Now, uh, the fortunate thing for us in, in school food service is the types of cooking we do. Um, you won't notice a difference um, in its performance. And there really is no difference in, in, in the performance um, with this type of cooking. Ovens will function as they always have. Um, range tops will function as they have. Uh, the only difference is the fuel source will be electricity, which will come from you know, increasingly uh, a more renewable source. So uh, it's, a, it's a very nice feature. Uh, across from the cooking line, we will have various uh, pieces of equipment that we um, that supports the cooking and also supports the serving function. So, uh, in that center strip down the the middle of the kitchen, we have work surfaces, we have sinks, we have hand washing stations, we have food prep sinks. We have the ability to take food that we've cooked and hold it at proper holding temperatures within warmers, which then those warmers are used to replenish. Uh, the hot food as the students move through in various lunch waves. We also have cold holding, um, basically reach in refrigerators where as we process, say, salads and fruit cups, we can hold those things in the refrigerator until it's time to display it on the serving counter. Um, and we, we can maintain its proper holding temperature because throughout this entire process, we have to have the components that are in here to satisfy the health department regulations as well as be functional for your, you know, and have the volume to deal with the, the volume of students coming through. Um, the lines are, for the most part, mirrored as the students come in. The first thing uh, they are presented with is a hot food which is typically portioned out for them in the tray, a reusable tray is handed to them, which they then take that tray and continue down the line. And then they self-select from there. So they'll take something for a cold component, a vegetable, a fruit. Uh, they will take a milk, um, a dairy component, a water, uh, and then any other components that are made available, palm fruits, any, anything like that. And then they're, they, they, they get to the cashier stand and what's really happening there is they're just checking in. They're just checking in to make sure that they've received and taken all the components that are required, uh, you know, for a well-balanced uh, nutritional meal. And then they go and sit down and, and, and eat. When they are done, they bring the reusable tray to the drop window where someone is standing there. They can, this is where the composting and, 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 and the recycling happens, right? So it can be done a couple of different ways. We can have barrels out there where the students self sort, and then any organic waste can be dumped into the organic waste bucket. You know, any recyclables can be disposed of in the proper vessel. The tray is put through the window. A staff member takes that tray, racks it onto a, a, a what we call a tray rack, which then goes through the machine, the dishwashing, the tray washing machine, 
It comes out magically on the other end, very clean and sanitized. And then the tray goes back into service. So you're reusing that tray and not having to use a disposable tray or styrofoam. Um, there is, you'll notice within that space, a three compartment sink. That is the code minimum. You could, if you wanted to, do everything in that three compartment sink, but really the most efficient way and the least you know, use of water would be to use the machine because those machines have gotten to be so efficient that they use less than a half a gallon of water per cycle of, 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 of the washing. So it's, they're super efficient. They've gotten, they've gotten to be so, um, so, so good at, at doing so, so much with so little water. So we want to encourage the use of the machines. And we've made that machine um, tall enough to be able to accept the utensils that we're using to cook as well. So that we're not having to do our washing manually. We can run everything through the machine if we wanted to. But the three compartment sink is there in the event of a power failure. Um, you know, we can still manually do uh, that process of washing, rinsing, and sanitizing whatever it is that we're using to, to prepare food and to serve. So um, that function is still present. Now, once the food is collected, let's say we want to compost, we would collect that food, we would hold it, and then we would typically ship it off site with a, a vendor that you would select. Recyclables go into the recyclable dumpster and then trash goes into the, to the regular trash dumpster. Uh, cardboard, of course, can, same thing can happen there. And any organic waste from the kitchen, same thing. You can collect it, sort it, and then have it um, also uh, sent off site. Um, that was a very fast overview. I know uh, I'm happy to go back and, and answer any questions, discuss um, any more particulars about the equipment. But uh, um, the next step will be to obviously refine this plan, prepare a cut book, a book that has images of this equipment so that we can then you have more information, more detail to continue down the process of, of making this uh, an exceptional kitchen. Mike has a question. Go ahead. Yeah, um, Jonathan, sorry, before Mike jumps in, Tammy just joined us just to ah. let everyone know. Hi. Hi, Tammy. Nice to see you. Hi, John. Um, Hi. So a question that I have about, uh, well, one question, the dish room. Um, so that's a, a three base sink you said against the wall. Um, mm -hmm. The other uh, inside wall is uh, the dish machine. Are there drying racks in? Yes, we'll we'll have drying racks. We'll have um, we'll have the portable drying racks that you'll have within this room. We just haven't shown that level of detail yet, but typically there'll be some in that room, uh, and there'll be some scattered throughout the kitchen. So the idea is that you can you can take these racks and use them as you see fit. Right, um, that's why they're on wheels. And they'll subsequently, they'll be the same type of racks that we use in your walk-in coolers. Uh, so if you find that you don't need as many drying racks, but you need more cooler storage racks, you can use them. There's some flexibility built in so that you can use them however you see fit. Okay. Um, and then, so by the, uh, the walk-in, the cooler and the freezer, is that, um, is that a prep sink in that area over there? Yes. So just outside the walk-in cooler, and, and again, like we'll go into this in detail when we meet, and, I, and, then, and the plans will be much more specific, but outside of that walk-in cooler freezer area is an L-shaped prep table with sufficient room in the center there to put a mobile table, if you so chose uh, to do. Uh, that prep table has drawers in it. It will have sinks in it. It will have wall shelves along the wall. It will have power in it so that you can plug various pieces of equipment in. You can bring a food processor in, take it away. You can bring a food slicer in, take it away, so that it it, it can be it can be used as you see fit. Okay, and and one other question. Um, so the uh, the warming uh, cabinets are those? Um, you thinking about having those be fixed? Or are they going to be um, portable? Right now, they're shown as fixed, but it it wasn't. There's no right or wrong. Uh, yeah. If they want to be portable, they can be portable. If they're fixed, they, then they're fixed. Uh, it really is a, a detail we would work out based on what's best for, for, you know, for the program. Um, I'd say mm -hmm. it's 50-50. Sometimes they're fixed, sometimes they're yeah. more stationary. It really depends on what your preferences are. Mike, what are you thinking as far um, as fixed or? As far as what? As far as them being fixed or or permanent, 
or stationary? Um, I think it would, I mean, probably be good to have the option of uh, being able to move them as not as long as we're not, um, you know, losing a lot yeah. of uh, capacity yeah. mm -hmm. in them, you know, like the size. Um, yeah, so, cool. yeah, at least having one, you know, um, portable forming cabinet would be good. Yeah, and, and, and I've then, seen that too. I've seen both. So. So Sorry. if you want to just keep, no, 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 you're fine. Just, Mike, just keep thinking about it, right? Um, you're right, flexibility is key. Um, who knows as maybe um, requirements or, or nutrition requirements for students might change in the future, whatever, it just might give you a little more flexibility how you can lay out the servery. Um, yeah. All right. And do you have any other comments or thoughts as far as the layout? Um, I think what we're trying to do is today just confirm that the layout does or does not uh, meet your needs. And then we want to do a little more shuffling around, especially as it relates to the walls for dry, you know, for the dry storage yeah. and um, yeah. all of that. So we can nail that down, but just getting some overall thoughts from you. Um, I think it looks pretty good. Like one thing that might concern me is um, like the dish return area. Um, it looks like it's going to be might be tight for space as far as having like, um, you know, trash or uh, composting and like with the with the door right next to it for the I mean, I guess that door wouldn't be used a lot by the chair storage room, but um, well, I, I got to know how how long that wall is, um, the dimensions of like how much space they're going to have. So yeah, have Tim. Different, you know, Tim. bins. Yeah, the, the location of that door I may want to move to the other side of chair storage. One for simply the function of moving things in and out of storage is easier than going around a turn. I mean, the reason it's there now is because this is a highly visible wall as you're walking through the building, but yeah. the function may dictate that it simply can't be there. And if if we're if there are uh, trash and compost uh, bins that need to be here, uh, we'll have to adjust that plan. Yeah, that would probably um, be a better design for us as far as function. Um, it, and I think space right there. Yeah, I agree. And, and I think we can mirror that that room and, and find better efficiencies in the use of the kind of the, the strip down the middle. And we and I think we we have some we may have the ability to make that room a little wider. And the other thing I can do is 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 in this next iteration of the plan, I can show barrels out there, like a typical barrel size, like a, a 23 you know, gallon barrel just for reference to say, you know, not, not that it will be a round barrel, but just to say, okay, well, this barrel is about two feet round. And this is a, about how many you can get in that space so that at least we have something to work with the next time we um, we review this kitchen. Mm -hmm. Tim, what what is the dimension of the um, composting area? The sink composting area, just again, everything seems so hard when you when you don't have a scale or a reference. I have it on my other screen. Um, it, Donna, it it's is about ten feet just, wide. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's nine, yeah, nine and a half. It's ten feet wide. Yeah. And then I mean, the other thing that um, I think I need to think more about is like the uh, the serving area, like the cashier. Like just how much room um, is going to be available? You know, you just think between, about like the number of kids I'm um, getting through the area uh, for each each meal period. Um, yeah. Yeah, and if it helps, I can I'll throw dimensions on there for reference. Yeah, that would be good again, so that we can you can have some time to think about it before you get it. And if we need to, we can even show you know students standing there. Just to give you, you know, again, that visual aid in, in helping to understand how we think the flow will work. Um, and then if you know, we need to make adjustments, we make adjustments. Um, 
Yeah, and then Mike, I think um, what we're thinking is, <clears throat> Tammy's on the call as well, Rupert, um, that it's probably gonna be three seatings uh, for lunch. So let's just say it's about 200 students for lunch. So, um, you know, it's, and, and, and most everyone does go through the lunch line, right? Yeah, right now it's about 65% or so of kids. Yeah, yeah. So um, just as we start thinking about, you know, the flow, how many students will be going through there. Um, the other thing, uh, Tim Cooper, we're, we're talking about those where the uh, point of sale stations are, those are going to be barn doors, is that correct? That is how they are currently shown, yes. So the barn, you know, nice wood barn doors, Mike, that will open and close so that uh, you can close off the kitchen, but that whole area would be open. And, and if needed, um, John, I, I don't know if you could help me out a little bit. I think mm -hmm. the stations are, do not require power. Everything is typically Wi-Fi and um, battery charge lately yeah. going forward it depends it depends on on what the what 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 system is selected but we've been seeing that in a lot of these the, the point of sale what we call the point of sale even though it is not a sale transaction it's more of a cataloging system the program is 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 battery powered and wi-fi um so but if it wasn't then what we would do is we would have to we would have to have a power plug in the, in the data port um, to be able to feed th those registers. Now, that can be done a, a variety of ways, and we can work out how that is. But the idea is that anything along those cashier stands or those, those, those stands, can they're portable, they're on wheels, and they can wheel into that, that aisleway where the students walk through. And then you can close those barn doors. So let's say you have an event in the cafeteria. You don't want to see those registers there. Uh, you can wheel them out of the way, close everything off so everything's nice and neat and, and put away. Uh, yeah, and then the other thing I was thinking, um, as as we think about the logistics, not not an answer we need today, but when you think about requiring power, if it's not battery or Wi-Fi, um, you know, where do we put the outlets? Uh, where do the cords run? Um, and so so it really creates less flexibility once once you get in and start using it. Um, the other thing would be if it was battery and Wi-Fi, depending on the flow of the students, you could actually push those further out into the cafeteria if needed, there's room. Okay. Um, so, so that if you're realizing, you know, there's a log jam or whatever, that you could actually, you know, give yourself a little more space. Um, and then I don't know how many I'll say cashiers, but um, folks that will be operating those, that's the other consideration. You could actually end up having, you know, two lines um, on on each side of right. those stations. That's correct. Yeah, we, we can, as we work through the design that will ebb and flow, uh, you know, we can, we can come up with various schemes and, and test different things, Mike, we can show different different configurations on paper so that in the future, if you want to add a third register, what that would look like. And, uh, or if it's just one register, what that would look like, you know, for example. Um, yeah. So these are just little details that we want to work out um, over the next few months, if you want to start giving it some thought. Yeah, so um, between, so there's no separator between the two, um, serving lines is that correct what do you mean by separator there's um, no like there's not a wall or right? i mean so somebody could like walk in so a, a wall line. here where the cursor is i mean it's possible but would, would that be beneficial no i'm just wondering if um well, so if the had if it would be even an option if it was like one cashier um and they could use both sides of the line just in like a in a single way, like yeah, and like a use you know, both sides of the lines as one line. 
think not every day, but like in you know. yeah, you you could do that, or you you could close one of the doors and only use one side. Um, but we we can get into that because it, we may want to configure that serving line in such a way that you could use it either way by putting say the milks on the milk and on the ends instead of in one big one in the middle, two smaller ones on the ends. You know, there's, yep. there's a lot of different ways to, con to configure the, the serving. Um, okay, yeah, we just... can talk about that because if that becomes a, a thing where you, you want to run just one line and, and use both sides of the line as one line, then that will certainly affect how we want to lay this out because we, we have to, we have to make it work both ways, which yeah, I mean, not that. normally I wouldn't want to, but like I'm just thinking of like contingencies because you know things mm -hmm. happen sometimes, and if you know situation arose where we didn't have people like trying the plan I had for like how we could make that work right. as best yeah, as possible. Labor woes, and you know, not having just not having the the people, right? So you need mm -hmm. to be able to adapt. I understand. Sean, you had a, your hand up and then Rupert. Yeah, I have um, several small questions that are all based on experiences in the schools. So that's why I'm just getting these that they seem silly. Um, is there a grill listed as a piece of equipment? Would there be a grill? There is no grill. Um, Mike, point. would you ever see a need for a grill? I know at one point that was desirable um, for some of the scratch cooking that was hoped for um and given this being a bigger school with a new facility do you, do you see a need for a grill mike gallo well is there um is there a tilt skillet is there that is okay is. right so you could use that like a griddle so let's say you were doing stir fries you could do it in a grill in the, in the skillet no and i sorry maybe i i said grill not griddle um but a, like a like child broiler like a flat top uh grill um a smooth top grill yeah, those terms are interchangeable. So okay. that's why I, okay, so, so 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 you yeah, griddle um and grill and then grill and charbroil are kind of the same thing. So okay. so there's like there's there's like one term for both. <laughs> so so yes, the flat smooth metal plate um let's call it a griddle. Um you can do that function on like a range top and that's a separate piece of equipment, or you can combine it with the skillet where the skillet has that same smooth flat surface. So you could use it like a griddle. The difference is this, the skillet has sides on it. So it's a little inconvenient in that respect, but it's convenient in, in that if you're doing high volume, you can really load it up with say vegetables and do a stir mm -hmm. fry and, and, and it's not going all over the place. And, you know, um, but certainly, you know, anything's possible. Putting a griddle in is not out of the ordinary. It's certainly not out of the question. It, it's, it, it can be accommodated if it's going to get used. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I'll just say, um, I can move on from that one, but Mike Gallo, just think about whatever yeah. equipment you can imagine maybe needing down the road, um, and then we can make sure yeah. it's there. Um, storage, again, some of these are more for Mike. Um, does that look okay to you, Mike, in terms of the path that um, deliveries will have to take to get to either the cooler, or the freezer, um, or the dry storage? Um, yeah, I mean, it's not ideal, but it's, you know, unless we had a, a door on the outside, um, you know, the deliveries are gonna come through the kitchen. Mm -hmm. uh, dry storage is fine, cooler, freezer, um, Yeah. you know, they're usually on dollies, right? So I assume that the width yeah. there is sufficient they for wheel dollies to get through. Okay. Um, it's just a matter of like, you know, they usually come early, you know, or later. Uh, so I, it wouldn't really be interrupting um, the, too the much in the kitchen, bunch. I don't think. Okay. But. okay. And then the waste, um, Tim, maybe you can show the path that waste would take to get out of the building. It'd go from that sort of corner in the cafeteria and then across the hall. It would go across the hall through receiving storage okay. and dumpsters would be in this area out here. Okay. Um, and this may be something that no longer is an option post COVID, but um, would Mike, do you ever see again, a salad bar coming and making a comeback? I know that was popular before COVID, especially with adults. Um, um, there, there, yeah. there may be space in there for it. I'm just curious if you think that would be something to, to consider. 
Yeah, a salad bar, like having a location for a salad bar, like like a port in like the serving area, right before um, mm -hmm. before you get to the register would be okay. good. Um, would would that it would be... require um, changing the configuration a little bit? You have to expand yeah. the we can um, serving area a little bit. I think. Yeah, as Donna said, we have some room there. I think we can we can move those cashiers kind of plan yeah. left and, and work something in. So would that be a secondary point where um, students could take, say, uh, a vegetable, an additional vegetable side or, or cold? Yeah, or have like food? composed salads or, okay. you know. About how many wells would you need, cold wells would you need in that configuration? Um, do you still have the one at the middle school, Mike? I mean, we, we can do, send, yeah. send a picture if you think that one's a good. I mean, the nice thing about that one is it's portable, so I can kind of move around and um, we can yeah, send yeah. a picture of that one. Yeah, please do. And then from from the photo, I can tell about how many wells are in it. And then we can oh. talk about it. A um, couple of little things. Are, are those two coolers next to the um, registers on the outside facing out? No, those are condiment stands. I'm sorry to okay. mention that. So th those are portable. They have some lockable storage down below. And they're just a, a flat work surface, which you, you can use to display, um, you know, any napkins or PCs. Okay. Uh, if, if, if you wanted to use them for something else, you certainly could. And if you okay. didn't want them at all, you can, we can delete them. But, okay. Um, okay. Um, and then the last thing, and I assume this is probably standard now, but again, it was something we struggled with. Um, I assume the dry storage, those will all be metal racks throughout the dry storage? Yes, yeah, so it'll be a combination of wire racks, NSF approved. So what that means is it's 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 rated for food for food use. Um, what metal wire racks, and then down the center I have dunnish platforms. So the idea is that you would take, say, case storage, load it in, in the middle. Uh, and as you break down the cases, you can put it away on the shelves and you're rotating your stock. Okay. All Thank of that you. can change. If you find a different configuration that works better, all wire shelving, we can do that. If you want all Dunnish platforms, we can do that as well. It's it's really up to you how you want it to function. Thank you. Rupert. All right, I'll try to ask a couple of quick questions. Hi, I'm Rupert, uh, Facilities Director. Um, John, um, uh, do you expect there will be uh, have to be uh, uh, kitchen hoods and Ansel equipment and so forth? Yes, there the will air? there will be uh, an Ansel because we are cooking. Uh, we will need we will need a hood to exhaust um, you know grease laden vapors and heat. Uh, there's no combustion gas, right? It's well right. electric. So there is, but but there is still a fire system in the event that. Um, you know, the fire system does more than just extinguish the fire. It shuts down, it shuts down the hood. It it, it, it shuts down the makeup air to the hood. It shuts down power to the hood. And it, and it sets into motion some sequences that need to happen. So there will be a fire system. Nice, thanks. Um, also, um, do you expect the walk-in cooler and freezer to have the condensers on top or outside the building? They typically go outdoors when okay. we can do that. Uh, mm -hmm. to get that heat and that noise out of the building. Thank you. Um, the chair storage table, I don't know if this is a question for you. Um, the chair storage, will that have room for the cafeteria tables? It will be 300 square feet, which is the program area. I mean, depending on if the table should fit, it, you will not be able to fit all of the tables plus the chairs that will be part of the front of the package for an assembly type use, um, but the tables stacked should fit in there. So Rupert, we we typically, um, you know, it, it will come down to what cafeteria tables are selected um, ultimately, but we, we typically do show um, how they can fit in the chair storage. So typically, Right, it's going to be all of the assembly chairs that are in there that are on dollies and and or the cart chair carts, and then you just mm -hmm. pull them out, and then you would just rotate them. But um, you know, when we get to cafeteria table selection, uh, we'll show how they can all stack 
neatly in there. It's a science, but yes. it typically works. <laughs> it typically works. I just, I just, I just had to ask. Thank you. Uh, yes. That's all my questions for the moment. So, so John, um, yes. I, I do just want uh, to bring up the fact that um, it's obviously all electric. The project will be net zero. Um, the question would be as it relates to equipment and um, getting the most energy efficient equipment. If there are options, considerations, do we have any proprietary issues? Maybe you could just talk to that just to mm -hmm. rest assured everyone that um, you're well versed, you live and breathe this daily and, mm -hmm. and what we got going. Yeah, so, so, so the, key, the key to net zero, um, it, when, it, when it comes from, from my perspective with respect to kitchen equipment is, you, you know, we have a budget, we have a dollar budget for the equipment. Well, we, we approach it with, we have a wattage budget too. You know, we want to keep those watts as, as low. We want to keep that consumption as low as possible. So what we do is we, you know, for example, on the refrigeration side, where we can, we we specify R two ninety, which requires a lot less power input to to function. Um, R two ninety is basically propane. It, it's I know it's a gas, but we need a gas in that refrigeration system. I'm thinking about the reach ins in order to to be able to to you know cool that box down. Propane is the most efficient way to do that, and it's and it's about as much propane as you get in a small lighter. And that's in the system and it's enclosed, it's in a loop. So it's not being released into the atmosphere, but it's what is transferring the heat. Uh, it's, it's what's pulling the heat from, from, the, from the atmosphere. So instead of using a refrigerant, you know, some chemical R22, whatever it is, R404, we're using R290. The benefit to that is you need a lot less of it, like so much, so much less, and it's super efficient. So Instead of that reach in refrigerator requiring 11 amps to run, it only requires 4.2 or 2.9. Uh, so we, those are the things we, we start to, to pick away at, at the power consumption of these various things. Uh, Energy Star dishwashers, low water uh, usage, you know, water sense uh, faucets uh, where, where it makes sense. Heat recovery at the dishwasher, for example, is something that we do so that um, the dish machine is only using cold water. It doesn't need to use hot water. Uh, and the, the more it runs, the more efficient it becomes. So if you're using it for two hours a day, it's much more efficient than if you were to use it for one hour a day. You know, it's strategies like that. Uh, the hot holding cabinets, um, fully insulated, um, low wattage units on the hot wells so that we're not, we're not we don't need to cook the food thus we don't need to put all that energy into the food at the hot well so we're very careful about how we specify the hot well so that we're providing just enough wattage to keep the food hot to the level that we need it without um, overdoing it and using energy we don't need you know we don't need to use so those are the things that we we do we we manage the watts like we do the budget you know the the monetary budget Thank you. And I, I know we'll be uh, working with you and Simone as it relates to the equipment and the energy and, and the code requirements. So that's a whole whole nother conversation that we're not going to bore Mike with at this point, I think. Um, Rupert, oh, Mike, sorry, did you still have more questions? You've been... Um, I guess one last question I had was about the, uh, the dimensions of the, the walk-in cooler and freezer. Yeah, I, I can give you that now. So just to give you an idea, so so that's a panelized to give you a, while I'm measuring this, you know the walk-in coolers and freezers that it's panelized construction. It's basically an insulated panel gets locked together. So we can make it any size we need it to be within the footprint we have. And what I'm trying to say is we can make the cooler smaller than the freezer or vice versa. We can, we have flexibility in how you know how it's divided up, how the ratios okay. work. But uh, let me get you right now. The cooler, the cooler is eight feet wide by nine feet deep. So once you go in the door, it's nine feet to the back, eight feet wide, and then the freezer is um, slightly wider. Uh, 
is ten and, feet. And yeah, John and Tim, what we can do is maybe put the dimensions on this. You know, we'll just give yeah. you the the kitchen, Mike, with all the dimensions, um, and and issue it as part of the meeting notes. And that that will be helpful. Things. Yeah, and will be helpful. And another thing we will do when we review this plan with you, Mike, we will have the dimensions of the shelving unit itself on the shelf. So you can see, well, this shelf is four feet wide or this shelf is, is three feet wide or six feet. You know, you'll be able to at least get a sense of what what it is and how tall it is so that <clears throat> you can make your assessment. And we, we and again, we could talk about the ratios and okay, great. And that. Rupert, did you have a last question or questions? Uh, yeah, I just forgot to mention that uh, from a facilities viewpoint, um, we tend to be in favor of the um, the movable equipment uh, for cleaning reasons. Uh, so just throwing that uh, two cents in. Thanks. Got it. So Donna, did should we move on at this point? Yeah, yeah, okay. I think so. I think I think Mike, you, you're good. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, conversations. Um, you know, whether John, Jonathan, we go through this committee, or you know, could be considered a working session between the two um, gurus, kitchen gurus. Mm -hmm. It might, you know, we can sit down. We can even come out, Mike, if it's easier. But we'll get you this information. Um, Sean, I think, said he'll get us the images of the um, serving, the salad um, yep. trays I can, I can over there. Yeah, Mike, Michael said Yeah, that would be yep. great. That, yep, that would be great. And um, we'll go from there. I think just collectively, although we're going to be jumping into the cafeteria, um, moving the doors on the chair storage so that they're uh, immediately to your right when you enter seems to be a better solution. Um, Mike Gallo, I do want to point out those circles that you're seeing there. Those are columns, um, just just as you start thinking about that. Okay. Just so you, un unfortunately, we need those to support the upstairs, which will be the media center. And then, and then just let's start thinking about, um, uh, John, so, so when do we start um, kind of providing some cuts and, and maybe just even letting Mike start thinking about that? During this phase, the design development yeah. phase. So we will start to assign a number. So we'll, we'll refine this plan. We'll assign a number to each piece of equipment. And then that number corresponds to the schedule that we will prepare, as well as to this cut book that we will, we will generate that that you can thumb through and, and actually see what 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 the piece is so that that'll be coming in the in the coming weeks all right Great. thank you guys thank you, thank yeah. you all thanks everybody yeah appreciate it. talk to you guys soon <laughs> thank you take care bye bye and then jonathan i think tammy we lose Tammy. I heard some peeing, which suggested some um, Mike. Also. Mike. Mike was back. I'm here. Um, <laughs> and and Mike Gallo, if if you do have any time to stay on, I uh, we wanted to talk about the cafeteria, the use of it, um, how that is laid out as it relates to the state. We're calling it a platform, <laughs> just because it's only got a few risers, but the stage. Um, and then the connection to the music, and we want to make sure that we have all of that um, as desired, or if we need to continue and further work on that. So, um, Tim, we were, we have um, Mike on. Um, Mike, were we able to get any of the music folks at this meeting? We were not, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, uh, there's a uh, district training on genocide education today, and that doesn't have to do with music, but it means that we, our ability to have sub, it's a it's a large training with especially teachers in the district, and it sort of compromised our ability to get coverage for folks. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I don't, I think Tammy probably had a drop off to 
give coverage to some folks. Maybe I think that's it. Yeah, yeah, it's a uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's okay. So, Tim, then um, yeah, the things maybe... we I was going to Go say ahead. the things that we wanted to discuss were big picture. So, Mike, I think you can answer um, the way we have the platform and the practice room set up. Uh, they will be entering through the cafeteria doors. Uh, there is a ramp that gets you to the level of the platform and the practice rooms behind, and then a door for acoustic isolation from the general practice area. There is also an operable partition here. So you have the three practice rooms um, plus the stage area, which could be a large practice space or almost a secondary classroom. Um, the questions that we have is one, does working with the common entrance of the cafeteria work for the way that the school has to function? We assume that there's not gonna be much in terms of music practice happening during lunch, but we don't know. So we just wanna confirm that. Um, and then getting in now doesn't disrupt it for any of the functions, either lunch for music or music for lunch. And that uh, we don't need to reconfigure either the ramp or the doors just because that would have um, a ripple effect on the other program elements. Uh, so we just want to confirm that the overall flow, the adjacent, how things are next to each other is going to work. So we don't have to. Yeah, I don't see. I mean, work. it looks like there's an access. I'm look at the bottom uh, uh, right hand corner. There's an accessible entrance up uh, and potentially through the back as well. There is a ramp here. Uh, right. And right. then the second means would be uh, via the stairs, but you are covered with the ramp at this end. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, we would not typically that this continues our current practice, which is ensemble groups typically don't uh, don't occur during lunch blocks. And that's not just because of the noise factor. It's because it'd be really hard to figure out which, how you, you can't pull kids, yeah. lunch, you know. Um, so uh, for me, that looks fine. Um, you know, and, and we talked about this originally. I mean, making acoustic privacy in that space, the price tag on it was significant and, um, you know, just not where I'd put my dollars at this point. Yeah, Tim, could you just slide the screen over so we can see the music? There you go. Right, there you go. right. And we have the other music room set behind the practice rooms. Yeah. Yep. No, that and sense. I think, and I, I'm pretty sure, Mike, but now would be the time to quadruple check. Um, we're calling them practice rooms, but they're really right uh, associated music programs. If those spaces are uh, sufficiently sized and that the three is the desirable, we, we know we're locked in with the overall right. square footage, but the question is um, if if this is, I know we have spent a lot of time on this and we've looked at it, we, we've received others' comments and this really was the desired layout and location. The other thing to note um, for everyone's benefit is you'll see the storage or boxes um, up against the platform. The amount of equi uh, instruments that you have is amazing. I mean, yes. and that that's a compliment, right? Yeah, no, so, I think it that way. So we we don't we we, we strategically um, put those there because we really are trying to leave the the spaces themselves uh, for function of of the program rather than um, stick them. You know, have have all of these shelves and everything. Um, this also would give students an opportunity to enter in the morning, and they could technically bring their equipment or their instruments up and put it along the back as well, right? Or do we have to create an area for students to leave their belong, you know, their instruments or whatever? Just as as we're thinking through a day in the life of a student, sure. like they come in, right? I mean, I think. Uh, so I can give my thoughts. I do wonder if you can capture some of these aspects with the square footage that yeah. we can email the instrumental music teachers because they're really good at getting back to us. Um, sure. Because like the two, three, two versus three, you know, we'd have to know the size. You know, for most of the instruments, you know, students do bring them back and forth, but not all, right? I mean, there's just some instruments like cellos and things like that that are just, you know, you have a fourth grader trying to carry a cello back and forth. It's not 
going to make it um, to the bus. So, you know, it's sort of a mixed bag with with that. But um, I think this makes sense. Do you have the square footage handy on the current, the three practice rooms? They're 200 square feet each. Yeah. So um, so they're not, they're, they're generous. Right. Well, yeah. All in the by the beholder, I suppose. But, yes. Uh, no. 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 <laughs> compare. Right. Right. In the MSB and in, in the MSBA world, they're right. They're right. Generous, no. 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 But right, I mean, so right. it's six hundred feet to play with. I would guess that they would do three smaller group rooms and two rooms that are three hundred. But I think if you can give me just clear language on that, I can get it off. And and that group's a group that responds really quickly. Yeah, and I think that that was their desire originally. This, this I, I is think the, so, their but I think desire, it's good to but, confirm because yes. I know you're getting to the point where you need like decision, decision, like fix yeah. and move on. So yeah. uh, I'm sorry I wasn't able to get folks here today, but if you're no, able, no, that's but in okay. terms of the platform, I don't see, uh, you know, the original question. I mean, I think that's the way it's going to go. I can't see us cording that off with an acoustic wall, um, and it's not what we currently do, and uh, I can't see us investing in that. Uh, to do it that way. It's it's also just like having been at, in Lexington, it just has a really nice flow to have it open like that. And we'd want to have that for more casual group performances. And, you know, we use it now, even some of the schools use it for, you know, at lunchtime having, you know, videos up and things like that in, in a way that's more flexible. Um, so it makes a lot of sense to me. But but Mike, just, just to confirm, make sure I understood what you were saying, we will still provide that movable partition right along the front of the platform in the case that you do want to use a platform as a separate music space or you're suggesting don't bother can you say that maybe it's probably just me and my inability no it could be me too go ahead tim you want to <laughs> so so what this shows and what is currently in the budget is an operable partition here a uh, switch operated that would open and close right at, um, but if you're saying that is not necessary, which I think I'm hearing you say, uh, we could take that out and essentially use those resources elsewhere. You know, I I do think it get does get used when we have plays and performances. Just, yeah, I'm hesitant to get rid of it altogether. I guess I was just saying that I wasn't looking for a switch operated thing that could be used where you can't hear the cafeteria. Yeah. Um, could it be a, I could it be some a curtain? separation would be good because people do use it at that time. I just, I know I'm referring back to an earlier meeting where you met with staff and they're like, we want to have like a removable wall where you can't hear anything on either side. And, and just, I know that's not sort of reasonable, but I think having the ability to do some separation, whether it's a, like, I guess, what are the options? Let me ask that a little differently. So the options are, I mean, if you really want to do the full spectrum, um, that there's a curtain which would visually break it off, but you, you have almost no, you have minimal sound separation. Right. Uh, what we currently have in is an operable partition. So they they do make switch operated, they do make manual ones, um, and they do vary in terms of the amount of sound that they stop. Um, we would specify, or we currently are carrying, uh, call it a middle of the road one. It is electrically operated and it does have you know, good sound uh, attenuating, but it's not an absolute, uh, but it, 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 it's a wall. It's absolutely a wall. If, if there was an ensemble practicing on the platform, um, you could hear it, but it wouldn't be loud uh, for lack of a better. I see what you're saying. No, I, I think if that can be done, it would be great. I mean, one of the things that's come up um, in other times, and I know we have that sort of separate their chair staging area and office and things like that, but just for a quieter space for some kids to eat lunch. I think of neurodiverse students who want to be connected to the lunchroom, but may need a quieter environment. I heard that, you know, I know Tammy's, I don't believe Tammy's on the call still. So I think there's a real benefit there. Uh, and I'm sorry, I misunderstood the front end of the conversation. And the operation of these walls is simple. I mean, for lack of a better word, um, if you only wanted the wall closed when you were in fact using it, as practice secondary classroom, you would simply close the door and the rest of the time, be it, uh, you know, additional seating, the cafeteria display, it could be open. That, yeah, that would be, that would really be ideal. And again, I'm sorry, I missed the beginning part of it, but if we're able to do that, it provides us a lot of flexibility, not just the music. I mean, I'm actually thinking about 
are there other lunch options as well as instructional options that could be achieved by that? Um, just given the population of this school and, and just what I currently see in some of the other schools that works for students with sort of like partial inclusion, um, as well as the other pieces you mentioned. So uh, my apologies for missing that. Um, but yeah, I, I, I would like to keep that. I think that's a net benefit for our kids. And to just, just for clarity, um, what you're showing in plan here is really both things. You've got a, a yeah. wall, but in front of that, you also have a curtain. If that I is correct. That correct. And we would intend to keep both, Jonathan, right? Yeah. The curtains for yeah. performances. Yeah. Exactly. And then we have curtain um, along the back as, as right, you see the zigs. Yeah, backdrop curtain. Yeah. 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 And the stage or the um, AV for the stage is typically a rear projection system um, with sound and everything, which is uh, controlled by um, the panels on, on the platform or stage. Uh, Tim or Rick, I, I'm pretty sure that's how it functions, right? Right, correct. Okay. So I see that, that Sean and, and Mike have hands up. I don't know if those are just from-, from I had a few questions, questions but Mike, Mike was first, I think. Mike, do you have a, a question or or was your hand is up? Is that me? Oh, no, yeah. that, was, that was from before, I think. Uh, okay. I, I just had a few questions. Um, and this maybe is for Mike Morris. Um, I assume Jerry will take a look at all this and sort of Jerry, the IT director, and make sure, um, you know, give his feedback on sort of the mechanics of the different spaces and what he thinks might need to be there from a technology perspective, or maybe he already has. Yeah, so Jerry, I mean, he, he's on a medical leave. He'll be back two or three weeks. Um, so just full disclosure on that. If you do need something sooner, um, Cody, who's the assistant uh, technology director, could jump in. Uh, Cody is a lot less. He's fabulous. He has a lot less experience in this kind of scale items. Um, so if you need it sooner, I can get to Cody. If you can wait two weeks, uh, I think it's worth to wait. No, it can wait. And Sean, thank you for pointing that out. We have talked big picture, um, right? But but as we do get into the details, we want to make sure that we're specifying the right equipment. So thank yeah. you. Yeah. And, and the rear projection screen and uh, projector in technology world is typically a part of the building construction budget. Mm -hmm. So it will be specified with that because they're built-ins. Good. Um, Part, so I get the benefits of the partition. I will say partitions, in my experience, are like almost like skylights. They break a lot mm. and often don't get used as often. Um, I know we were looking to take some partitions down because they wouldn't work. <laughs> and again, the, the age, but um, when they're not used a lot, it seems like they tend to break more often because they just, you know, they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. So are the partitions that you guys have used in your experience, have you had any mechanical issues with them? No, and I think your your experience is absolutely correct. If your world is gym partitions, yes, that's that's the experience. Yeah, <laughs> which is why when we divide gyms, we've um, almost exclusively used drop curtains okay. to do that. Uh, but uh, room dividers uh, haven't been a problem, and 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 um, our our users have enjoyed the flexibility. Okay, great. Um, and then two other little questions. I'm just trying to make sure I understand sort of the um, the height. So with that main lobby, is it going to be like a slow drop down to the cafeteria? Um, I'm trying to, with the ramp going up to the platform, trying to get a sense of the different sort of heights of the cafeteria versus the platform versus the practice rooms, the music room, that kind of thing. So if we're talking about the floor plane, uh, not the ceiling plane. Uh, yeah, the floor all, plane. Yeah. All of this with the exception of the platform, these practice rooms and the ramp is leveled. So okay, so those will be elevated, the just the practice yeah. rooms and the, okay. And this is 18 inches above the rest of the floor. Other than that, the entire first floor is at the same elevation. Okay, that, that kind of answers my final question, which was, um, would there be any benefit to having access from the music room into the practice rooms? Um, just for that sort of connectivity between those areas, but it seems like if you did, you'd have to have steps up to it. Um, yeah, actually, okay. you know, Sean, we, we spoke with the music folks and they actually preferred not to. Okay. Um, it, you know, you've got additional doors, which then 
limit limit the use and the right space. for every yeah. door or even just use you have to keep that area clear um and they were saying that they don't typically um wouldn't have a you're gonna have a single music teacher in the music classroom and and the practice rooms would be used by other teachers not mm -hmm. necessarily it wouldn't be them or not simultaneously so they don't need to that be connection. in both places at the same time. Yeah. So, okay. so this maximizes mm -hmm. the square footage use of the practice rooms, um, and and then also the flow over to the platform and all the storage that's required for for the programs. Thank you. Yeah, but thank you for asking. Sorry to jump in one more time. Just. Um... And I might have come up when it was gone. Are we done in terms of cafeteria and kitchen? Like I'm just thinking about Gallo and whether he can get off to the rest of his day. Have a nice day, Mike Gallo. <laughs> have a nice day. Thank we'll you, send Mike. you everything. Nice yeah, to we'll meet send you. you everything. Thank you. <laughs> Do you want to jump into the VE, Jonathan? Sure. Uh, you know, I don't we, know. Yeah, because I think we've kind of uh, covered everything on in in the kitchen uh, music performance zone. Um, yeah. Actually, let me ask one quick question. How uh, this is more just for personal information, but how tall is the kind of proscenium opening? It's not really really a proscenium opening, but you know how tall is that that panel wall? That we're going to move. Uh, the head oh, of the opening. The head of the opening will probably be about 12 feet above the floor. We don't have it detailed. There are changes in the ceiling plane here with this, uh, you know, the perimeter of the cafeteria being lower, the, the height of the main space being about 13, and then the opening about 12 feet above the floor. So it's, it's, it's I want to say, modest or appropriately scaled for a theatrical space, but appropriate yeah. for uh, what we have. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, and and Jonathan, to that point, we'll we'll start talking about um, what the space will look like. You know how we're going to um, define the stage area, et cetera. <laughs> but that kind of just brings us back to where we last left off. Was um, as part of the discussion, we reduced the height of of the building, so right. which yeah. takes us to the VE, and yeah. here we are. Um, there are two parts of the VE discussion, one for the site, which we will touch on later in the site meeting uh, for those that will be there. Um, much of the VE elements that we exercised, accepted uh, for the building itself were shown in all of the videos that I know all of you have seen. So the latest iterations of the videos had the building height reduced. It had the changes in materials that we accepted. Um, that the videos of the interior had the changes in glazing. Uh, the one item that was not shown, though, we did accept uh, a slight reduction in the gymnasium exterior glazing. Mm -hmm. uh, and what these drawings I am pulling up are showing are the quantity and not necessarily the layout, uh, but it was a 30% reduction in the glazing at the exterior of the gym. Um, and you can see here, um, the red area is represents 30% of the glazing. Right now, this sh shows a reduction on the east and west clear story at maintaining the south. Uh, for a glare situation, that's going to be the best option. Your sun is going to be high when it's up the south. And if we left the glass on the east and west, um, you could get glare situation on the side baskets. Uh, that being said, this is just a quantity of the glass that we're going to remove. You know, for the purpose of evenness of light within the gym, we'll probably retain some somewhere on the east and west side. But we we just wanted to let you know that as we develop the design, there will be a little less glass on the gym. Um, and that represents the only VE change that has not been previously demonstrated in the videos that we've all been seeing since January. Um, you know, the impacts of the VE are uh, a bit more tangible and move things a bit around more when you get outside, but we'll, we'll, we'll discuss that in the site. Maybe. 
uh, and then if there are any other questions, but that's all that we really have to show on on the VE. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have any questions. Thanks for the update on that. I'm good. So Donna, was there anything else that that you or your team wanted to go over, or should we move on to public comments? I think I think that is it. Um, as as Tim referenced, a lot of the um, reductions in costs really occurred out on the site, and what we want to do is um, every week there's some specialized spaces that we're really going to want to focus on, but you know, uh, future conversations about the cafeteria really will be like, how are we going to celebrate the stage and what that design is going to look like, et cetera. But I think for now, Tim, you're, you're well, good. You're done. I mean, um, you know, just as Donna's saying, looking forward, you know, we just started DD last week. There's not a whole lot of new material for us to dig into this week. It's just confirming and making sure that the direction we're moving from here is correct as we're, you know, not moving big pieces any around. But with each subsequent meeting, there's going to be more and more new stuff to evaluate, consider, and, and get feedback on. Um, so this group will meet again. We have, we have quite a few groups, but this group will meet again, I think, in two weeks. Uh, next, 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 next week. week. Next week. Next week. Sorry. It's yeah. Horrible. And I think the agenda is the li library. Yeah, library. Yeah. And the STEM, STE, Science Tech Engineering <laughs> space. And Mike, um, with that, before we just jump to public comment, um, I don't know if you want to have an offline conversation about uh, who's going to participate in that. Yeah, no, let's let's chat offline so that we get the right people in the room. Hopefully, you know, there's no major trainings that day in our district, so it frees us up a little bit. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, let's let's follow up offline and we can make a list and make sure people get invited and hopefully uh, people are able to swing it. Awesome. Thank you. So Jonathan, the floor is yours. We're okay. <laughs> well, we're actually going to turn the floor over to anyone in our attendees. I see that Rudy has his hand up and I'm going to try to allow him to talk and hopefully this works. Rudy, can you? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Look okay, great. A uh, couple of things. That, <laughs> this is a very helpful discussion. <clears throat> I'm really glad to see your kitchen consultant is really focused on energy issues as part of the criteria for equipment selection. Um, he's, he mentioned uh, that he has a wattage budget that he looks at as well as his dollar budget. And I wonder if that could be shared at some point and uh, some notes on how that was generated. And I'm wondering if we can use that kind of approach in other systems in the building um, and where, if those numbers have come from other school kitchens. Um, I hope that we're looking at induction ranges as part of the possibility for equipment. I would assume so from his discussion. Um, but I know that that will cause some operational changes in terms of cookware. Uh, there's been some concern about possible health impacts for people with pacemakers, so there might need to be a review of staff. And I would think you'd want staff to um, comment on the type of cooking and whether um, the cookware they have and the way they cook is amenable to induction range cooking. I hope so. Um, the um, In the basis of design and building narrative, you had some really good comments, I thought, about how the cafeteria is going to be on the backup power circuit so that it could be used for temporary storage. I think that's a uh, temporary uh, shelter. And I think that's really important, but will be maximized in impact if there are plenty of electric outlets throughout the wall perimeter of the cafeteria, because I think charging phones is going to be one of the main shelter um, needs and communication. And I also wonder if the gymnasium could be included. I don't think it was in the backup circuitry because that's the other big space right there. And if I was designing a building to get double duty for temporary shelter purposes, I would make sure the gymnasium was also on that circuit and that it also had lots of electrical outlets around the perimeter. Um, 
And then um, <clears throat> on that matter, I know this isn't quite on topic uh, for today's discussion, but uh, bathrooms are going to be the other thing needed for shelter purposes. And I believe there's only one inside the one public bathroom inside the, this wing of the building. And I'm wondering if a second door down past the other first floor bathroom on the educational wing might be looked at as a possibility so that in a pinch, you could include, you could lock down classroom uh, doors and then use the full length of the hallway or a part of the length of the hallway, the educational wing on the first floor as a bathroom space for your shelter purposes. And then finally, I think I had one here session. Oh, on induction ranges, um, there's some experimental ranges coming out on the West Coast. I don't think they made it to the East Coast of induction ranges with battery backup included. And it has the advantage for residences of bumping up power, but for our purposes, it might mean that the ranges uh, serve as a secondary during power outages, serve as a way to keep some minimal cooking and heating um, uh, facilities available in the kitchen without necessarily having to route them through the the whole uh, generator backup. <clears throat> it, overall, on shelter, I think if, if you could, you'd want the kitchen, the gym, and the cafeteria all in your backup power circuitry so that, that it really becomes a highly functional temporary refuge or temporary shelter that could provide limited hot food or coffee and that kind of thing, as well as a lot of uh, power outlets for residents who might have to shelter there. So um, thanks a lot. This looks like a really great start. Please keep focusing on equipment, energy use, and the different, not just in the kitchen, but elsewhere. Thanks. Thank you, Rudy. Uh, do we have anyone else who would like to make public comment today? Maria, let's see if I've done that right again. Maria, can you hear us or can we hear you? I, I hope so. Hi, guys. Um, just one quick question. And I assume that you've already, um, th that this is already done. But uh, when you're talking about decreasing the amount of glazing and, you know, by that, and sorry, I'm on a phone, so I can't see what you're doing. Um, uh, I assume that that means that there are literally less windows in the gymnasium than was originally there. And just to reassure um, everybody that's thinking about having enough light in the gym, would that reduction still allow for most of the time having not needing to turn on lights in the gym and, you know, at least during daylight hours, of course, that you could minimize uh, the use of electricity to have good lighting in the gym? Thanks. Great. Thank you. Uh... Any other public comment? I think that is it then. And I don't think we had any uh, unanticipated matters to come up in the last 48 hours. And so I think I can uh, um, adjourn us at this point. Very good. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good to Thank see you. you. Have a good rest of your day.